respect for volunteers and there are certain things where you have volunteers come into the schools we're very good particularly teaching religion and things like this but something like like chess where you want concrete sort of outcomes educational outcomes this competition that pushes you and group I think is important and when it comes to the incentives in Australia going to what Jerry was saying in Sean's organisation, they have started organising massive inter-school tournaments. They have started getting onto the boards. You know, the chess boards are volunteers mainly. They've been getting in there and pushing things to happen because if there aren't these big tournaments, if there isn't a good support from the chess organisation, teachers will say we're not interested. So you've aligned the incentives of the professionals to start doing things that otherwise our chess federations through volunteers have to do. So you're improving the chess community as a well. whole. I have a counterpoint to that. And you know, I'm kind of, Sean uses chess kit, but is building tournaments really the right way to go? So I see that there's an incentive there, yes, it is the right way to go, no it's not. If we create this environment of competition, is that kind of the antithesis of what we want to create? Or do we want to create an environment of competition? Do the kids, are the kids actually learning what the lessons of chess are if they're so engrossed in just becoming the best chess player instead of applying the method of thinking that chess gives them? I understand, I understand your point 100%. Yeah. When I was in, um, in Kenya looking at what they do with mini chess, uh, the event has prizes, but it has so many prizes and right. everybody gets a certificate. When I went there, I didn't know they were gonna do this to me, but I had a photo with every single participant with their certificate which was 400 photos in one day, <laughs> sitting there like this. So it's, it, is, it is competitive, but it's competitive in this sort of, you know, everyone wins a prize type spirit. But I think having, the point of these tournaments, I think, is more for the school to see some reason, like why should we have this chess program? Well, our other schools around us are having it and they're going in these events and their newsletters say our team did this and our team did that. And so I think there's also an element to attracting schools to consider chess as well. But I take your point about the, perhaps the didactic uh, goals can get confused with the competitive goals, which is probably what Lewis has got written as well. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> you must speak with a higher pitch. <laughs> no, because I see that they, they don't do this. Okay. No, 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 You're giving them time. <laughs> You're giving them time to think. <laughs> and already we have one yeah, question. Yeah. Okay. So I think that uh, teachers could uh, learn that uh, chess and uh, chess professionals are volunteers because they know their students well. Uh, they know how to motivate them because they know their groups and they teach them all the week, not only one hour uh, a week as a volunteer or a chess professional. And I think it's important because they know how to motivate children to, pl to, to, to learn chess. And they can be such a hero for them because my teacher likes chess, I also <laughs> love chess. And that's what I see in my lessons. Okay. So I uh, vote for teachers. Sean, I bet you you have some very strong counterpoints to that. <laughs> yeah, well in, in terms of that one in particular, the, in Australia anyway it might be different other places around the world. We have the general class, for example, at a school I teach a morning at one school and I teach an afternoon another day of the week at the same school. Uh, there's the holistic where they all play in their year levels and we teach every child. And then there's the advanced groups and the sort of channeling and funneling. I also teach some of those students from the same school at an after school chess club that's for any school to attend and then again privately. So some of these children I see five, six, seven days a week depending on when there are tournaments and stuff. And I would argue that I have a better rapport and know some of those children better than their classroom teachers as a result of seeing them in a different light and sharing a common interest like chess, like football, basketball, anything else it might be, give you a grant to bond with the child in a way that a classroom teacher that sees 30 children at once may not necessarily have. So that would be my counter to that because I mean generally in Australia anyway, um, the chess classes are generally a smaller size than a standard classroom. But the ratio of students to teacher is generally much lower. We wouldn't usually exceed 20 ever to one teacher and if we do we extend it to two teachers to less than that. So I mean more one-on-one -on -one time uh, leads to that. And the other thing, just going back to David's point about the tournaments and incentives, the schools themselves are quite interested in the tournament side of things because they do get trophies, they go to national competitions, they go to you know regional amongst their own grouping of schools. 
Um, I know at the moment in Brisbane we've got a big thing of scholarships, um, all based around chess. So there are. Oh yeah, the private mm. schools. Yeah, so in Australia we have private schools and public schools, and everyone wants to send their kids to a private school, and it can be about twenty thousand quid a year, fifteen thousand quid a year, and they started offering chess scholarships. Um, sorry, sorry. To uh, well, I wanted to to speak uh, something completely different about it because. Uh, we are speaking about uh, uh, chess uh, after school, not before, not during the normal lessons. So maybe the traditional educator is not uh, the best option. Maybe in the scholar time, of course, is the, is the best option. And the volunteer happens the same. I understand that the kids uh, which goes uh, to after school uh, wants to learn chess. Maybe not uh, the benefits of the chess. They want to learn real chess. Uh, if we speak about uh, chess during the scholastic time, it's different because we must try to not separate, for example, uh, kids with special disabilities, or ADHD, uh, Asperger, I don't know, because for example I have a, a project about kids of ADHD and uh, I think that in this time the best uh, personnel to teach is volunteers and traditional educators, but we are speaking about uh, after the school. And after the school I, I wrote this, uh, what is the goal, because it's not, diff it's not the same if the teacher is a title player. Title player uh, try to obtain maybe the best results over the board, but title play trainer has better uh, maybe resources to teach the kids, maybe not to, to arrive so far, but uh, to teach them better. And of course, title of a school instructor, is, this is the new uh, title of FIDE and ACU, and uh, try to, to make uh, something uh, more uh, educational, not uh, so competitive. And this is the, the main goal. I am uh, the coordinator of Castel Project in Spain, and all of you know that uh, the main goal is uh, that uh, the teachers must be the, the initiative, uh, must have the initiative in the school, but in the school time. I think after the, after the school, the, the best option must be a title player, but uh, maybe with all the things you had. Uh, working by the heart, uh, we're working with uh, motivation, with idea, but uh, not only with the objective, the final objective to win championship, for example, because what to do with all of the kids who don't want to play, who don't want to, comp to compete because they have stress, they cry a lot during the games. Uh, we must try to not uh, separate these kids. The idea is, okay, uh, teach the kids, but uh, make uh, an inclusion for all of them. Uh, understand that uh, many times you have in these groups kids with special uh, disabilities, and uh, okay, you can't uh, work with all of them uh, in the same manner. Okay. So, um, in the final, I, I would like you to say come, something. Come here. No, 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 no. You don't need to make, say something. Only if you want to. I don't want to um, force you. But I would like you. I would like you to have a ranking. Please come here and write down what do you think. One, two, three, three, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah please write down on paper. Can I share my personal experience? Absolutely. Okay. I, I feel like a, a little ant in, in your, your group, in your position, because I'm actually um, a mum. I've been working for nearly a year for, for Malcolm, so I'm a volunteer, basically. Um, this is my sort of second career. So I go into schools, uh, teaching to year threes, and I go to into homes as well with elderly people. So the the two end of the year spectrum. Really. Um, so far, what I've seen is I really do share your points, saying that actually teachers might be the best people to provide the knowledge in, in chess to, to children. I really do that's true because they have basically the uh, teaching skills a volunteer doesn't have. Um, I, I'm not being vain but I've, I've fitted into the, the schools because I'm quite firm and managing a class and this works. I know that's not for everyone. You need to have certain skills to, to manage 30 or more kids with 
different range of characters because there's a lot of management to do in a class. Um, but you have to have an eye as well for more who are, for those who are more gifted. And there are, there's always uh, a few of them in a class. You have to be able to go at the bottom of the class and pick up the silent one. Who no, but who wouldn't tell? So there, there is. A, the, you, you need to have certain teaching skills, as you said. But at the same time, you have to be able to put your ego on the side and, and be able to pick the best one and channel them into a club. Because I haven't got the, the knowledge and chess most of you must have. And that's not the position I want to have. I'm here to teach, basically. And I think I'm doing it in a, in a good way. Not because I'm a mom. That's another thing, but because I I have this passion of this will lead you something, this will, this will bring you something, and this works. But at some point, my knowledge in chess won't be enough, and I know that I've got people behind who will be able to uh, to, to to help me, or, or I can channel the children towards club and people more skilled than than I am, and that's that's the point. So again. Um, as you said, is chess done for tournament or is it a communicational tool? I think it's both because like sports you don't think uh, is it a competitive thing or is it something that will help you to improve your health? It's both and it is both. Really good, really good point. Uh, one other thing to... Like, no, for me the ideal thing is uh, if you have the qualification as a chess player. Uh, for me, the ideal uh, setup if you have a chess background as a chess player and a traditional educator as well. But uh, talking about goals, uh, ch uh, chess as a tool, for me, I go for this one because they have the pedagogical background, the methodology, and uh, I remember my experience when I was a kid. Our ch chess teacher not had none of this, and uh, he was just so hard on us. And uh, experiencing him, he could not go to school <laughs> in the 21st century because kids need something else, and uh, more what you said, it's about personality, how you encounter kids. But uh, I teach chess in schools and um, half of the class want to compete and they are always asking me when we're going to have a competition and uh, working with teachers as well, uh, they, they were just not confident, most of them who have not, uh, who doesn't have uh, chess knowledge. So I finished a, a course with Judith Polgar in Hungary and uh, most of the uh, teachers had no any clue about chess. So they were trained step by step about pieces and movements and uh, slowly, slowly, what they said they have to develop together with the kids. But I think they still have to be more confident about it and mo most of them were just not. So for me, just to be a traditional educator without any knowledge of chess and just learning it together with the kids step by step, it's just for me, it's, it's not really working out. But uh, yeah, we have already 300 schools in Hungary where they teaching chess with this uh, chess palace program. And uh, I think because they have this background and a lot of help from uh, Judith and uh, from her organization, I think uh, they are going to be more devoted and more confident through the years. I think the combination of both would be great. Uh, teachers who play chess and who enjoy playing chess would be perfect. But that's probably one generation uh, ahead. 